Although Germany had a significant gap in the number of artillery compared to the Allies during World War II, it was clearly superior in terms of quality. Several military industrial enterprises, represented by Krupp and Rheinmetall, produced many excellent works in related fields. As the war progressed, the caliber of artillery barrels became larger and the lethality of ammunition increased. Although Germany developed a 75mm gun with a barrel length 100 times its diameter, this was not its limit. Germany also had a 81mm anti-tank gun called the PAW 1000 with a barrel length 105 times its diameter. By the middle of World War II, the main anti-tank gun of the German army had transitioned from the Pak 3637 to the 75mm caliber Pak 40. Although the latter was sufficient to deal with most armored threats faced by the German army, as a towed artillery, its weight of nearly 1.5 tons limited the mobility and flexibility of the gun. In 1943, Germany decided to develop a more lightweight towed anti-tank gun, which was the PAW 600. Although this gun was a rifled gun, its firing principle was fundamentally different from conventional rifled guns, mainly in terms of ammunition. The ammunition used by the PAW 600 was divided into two parts. The main body was derived from an improved 80mm mortar shell and used high low pressure technology. Unlike conventional ammunition, which uses propellant combustion to generate high pressure propulsion for the projectile, the ammunition used by the PAW 600 continuously pressurized and propelled the projectile through a hollow cylindrical structure with holes. When fired, gas leaked from the holes, reducing the initial chamber pressure while propelling the projectile forward. As the propellant burned continuously until the pressure inside the projectile balanced with the pressure between the base and the inner wall of the barrel, the projectile experienced a sustained thrust that gradually increased, resulting in a higher muzzle velocity. Compared to conventional artillery, the muzzle velocity of the POW 600 ammunition was only 420 meters per second, which was insufficient to penetrate armor with kinetic energy projectiles. Therefore, the anti-tank ammunition for the PAW 600 was a hollow charge armor-piercing shell capable of penetrating 140 mm homogeneous steel armor at a 30D degree angle. The effective range for anti-tank combat was only 6,700 meters, with a maximum indirect firing range of 6,200 meters. Due to the lower chamber pressure, the gun barrel was made of thin steel, reducing the overall weight of the gun to 590 kilograms, facilitating the gun's mobility and transportation. It was also capable of threatening medium tanks in anti-tank combat and was easier to produce. Germany had planned to produce 220 guns per month, but the actual production volume was very low. With the success of the PW 600, Germany developed an upgraded version around 1944-1945 known as the PW 1000. There is limited information available about this gun, and the Allies discovered relevant microfilm records in the Krupp factory's design department. The PAW-1000 can be considered an enhanced version of the POW-600, with the basic principles remaining unchanged. However, the propellant and barrel of the gun were strengthened to achieve a continuous acceleration of the projectile, resulting in an increased barrel length ratio of 105 times. However, the barrel, resembling a fishing rod, was not made from a single steel column, but instead utilized Krupp's expertise in jointed structures. The gun carriage was directly modified from the SFH-18 heavy field howitzer carriage. It is known that the German army conducted relevant tests on the gun, and its performance was certainly improved compared to the PAW-600, but there is no surviving data on the specifics. Considering the situation in Germany at the time, even the simpler PAW-600 could not be mass-produced, let alone the more complex POW-1000. The German army lacked the resources for production and did not have enough time or manpower to train soldiers to become familiar with the new artillery. The related designs were ultimately lost. However, this uniquely performing artillery did not disappear with the end of World War II. 
Not only did the U.S. military capture physical examples of the PAW-600 for testing, but the Soviet 73mm 2A28 recoilless gun also adopted a similar firing principle, enhancing the firepower of the classic BMP-1 infantry fighting vehicle. 